Hello friends, family, and other creatures of the sea, and welcome to a best of three between Gumio here in the bottom right as our red Terran player playing for Psystorm Gaming. And in the top left as our blue Protoss player, it is Creator. What is this? This looks like a 13 gate. Yes, it was a 13 gate. Okay. Not on the low ground though. Huh. Interesting. Very interesting. So, whenever you play 13 gate, this is off of a 12 pylon. Uh, the, pretty much a Protoss equivalent of a 12 pool. It's going to allow for an extremely quick adapt across the map. And usually we see this being built on the low ground to kind of cut even more time for that first adapt. This gateway will finish a solid 10 seconds. Maybe even slightly more. No, it's, yeah, it, sh it should be 10 seconds. Yeah. 10 seconds before it usually finishes, which means the cybernetics core can be built 10 seconds quicker as well. I just think Creator was a, a second too slow there. Which is kind of bad if you're playing a build that is so focused on uh, winning the, the, the tiniest amount of time. Seems a little bit silly. But yeah, this is... Uh, so usually the cybernetic short timing is 124. This time it was 116. So eight seconds faster. The zealot will need to be cancelled, I think. I'm not quite sure why we're seeing the zealot even started. Um, it's just going to delay your adapt that you do want to build. Stargate, most likely the, the choice of tech here that is going to be proxied. And you can expand behind. It's actually going to finish it. I, I don't like this build. I just don't like it. This... Well, I like the build order. I don't like the execution. <clears throat> so, because this zealot started too late for whatever reason, or because the zealot got built altogether, the adept isn't actually that much faster. The zealot building delayed the adept. This adept at a standard core timing finishes at 220. Right now, it finished at 219. So, the only advantage here... Oh, oh, oh. Okay, that got spotted. That creator got is a fast proxy stargate, which he's going to most likely build a void ray with. But I, I don't know. Like, I feel like a lot of the power of these builds comes from the Adept being capable of getting across the map very rapidly. In combination with the Zealot, that can secure low ground pylon, it can just do a lot of good for you. First Hellion is out, Tech Lab gets built here immediately, but it's going to be with a reactor first. So I honestly think this game has already ended. This is going to be a very short one. Uh, this Void Ray is going to get spotted, Hellion makes its way across the map, will force a unit to stay at home. And on top of that, there's plenty of marine outs to deal with this. There's going to be a Viking building already, a Cyclone as a follow-up. Like, it's going to be eight marines, half a Viking done, zero batteries on the map. Like, a Void Ray can't win this fight. It is simply impossible. Hellion is going to make his way back home as well, which is kind of good because it could help against the probes or against uh, this. I mean, this is that. This is that. This is game. This is completely over. This probe is going to die before a single battery goes up. Cyclone's gonna pop out. I think Creator might try one more time. Uh, not necessarily with this Void Ray, but probably with the next Void Ray. There's a Viking out already, and Gumio can just clear this pylon right now. Don't think there's anything at all that Creator can do about it. There we go, Void Ray gets blasted. W gets called, but it's a W for Gumio. He's just handing it over in the chat, and that is going to be game number one. Pretty much a straight up free win there for Gumio in that first game. Got a little bit lucky, I guess, that he didn't end up opening up with a with a Reaper. If you play double gas openers, very often Terrans open up with a Reaper, or 99% of the time, and Gumio played Reactor first. So that definitely did help his case. Still didn't really like that execution of Creator. Odd little thing that happened there. Anyway, follow up here. Uh, next game will be a uh, more standard gateway timing. And a single gas so far coming out of uh, out of Gumio with no next SEV being rallied onto the gas. Seems to me like we're actually going to be playing a single gas build order. This uh, does change up things a little bit. Probe Scout coming out here. Not so sure if it's going to be capable of anything. I've also been, I've been doing my own research into uh, these build orders. The, like the 12 pylon 13 gate and the 13 pylon 14 gate which is the one that hero prefers and i've noticed that uh, the 13 pylon 14 gate is significantly better in eco and really only has a very small timing downside so the 12 pylon 13 gate gets a 10 seconds faster core and the 13 pylon 14 gate 
gets a six second faster core. So it's really only a, a four second difference between those two. And the most important thing I think about these fast core build orders is the fact that you can delay your opponent's command center. If they build it on the low ground, if you can just kill that SCV again and again, and that can be done with six seconds already. So sure, having four extra seconds is nice, but it's not necessary whatsoever. I think, so what I'm trying to say is that I think that 13 pylon, 14 gate is actually superior to 12 pylon, 13 gate. It is perhaps slightly theoretical and technical, but I find it interesting. So you can piss off if you don't like it. I like the second pylon position here. <clears throat> this uh, blocks the Reaper jump up spot. Always feels like this type of positioning does kind of force you into a Stargate. Ooh, wow. All right. That's a build. Now that's a build. Is this the Estrella build? Huh. Huh. It might just be, no? No, it's not. Twilight Council is a follow-up. It's like semi-hidden, but gets spotted if a Reaper jumps up. Stalker pops in forward. Doesn't see anything. Does know, of course, that this was all of one gas. So we'll see the CC on the high ground here. Be pretty okay with that entire entire enterprise that Gumio is going for. Huh. Stalker Sentry Stalker. Twilight Council. We'll see Blink. This is a really nice build order against what Gumio is playing. This Gumio seems to be heading for a basically a, a crappy version of a 2 on 1. With like a Hellion in there as well. I think this actually could could be good. Does this this stalker doesn't escape? You can just keep running. That is not how it works, is it? What you're gonna stand in here and then fight back? This is, this is Shoot a kite at this, no? Surely. If he would have had a couple of shots on this Hellion, he would have at least cleared a Hellion, probably saved the... All right, well, I'm not going to say anything. It is not my place to say something here. It absolutely is not. Oracle will scout what this is. Sees that it's a... Uh, stim opener. Hey, okay, wait a second. Stim. Two barracks. I saw a star park. Ding, 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 ding. Two on one. Comes in with a very nice response here. Creator, I like this a lot. I love this even. Robotics facility, up to four gases. And probably saying something along the, uh, along the lines of, hey, I'm just going to throw down a robo bay here. Your army is going to consist of a lot of marines for a long time. Factory units might be a little bit delayed, although this tech lab actually will be quick. My third can, you know, be delayed by quite a bit as well against this. There's not going to be a Raven. There's not going to be Mind Drops. This is just going to be a straight-up attack. So Stalker Colossus is fantastic against this. Absolutely fantastic. Look how late this Blink is, by the way. Imagine if this would have been a Mind Drop. Just imagine. Could have gotten in twice, you know. Drop the first two mines, then pick them up, fly out, drop them in again before Blink finishes. This is why I'm not a huge fan usually of sentry build orders, because it tends to delay your Blink by a very, very long amount of time. Very large amount of time. Observer does not quite spot these marines. Okay, here we go. Does spot it now. Robo Bay is late, but as long as... Wait, there's no battery here? Should be fine. This should be fine, because the stalker count is sufficient. Sentry is going to get sniped. This is not a good fight for Gumio, I think. I think he's misjudging this position. I really believe he's misjudging this position. Is not going... No, he is! Medivac goes down. Good jump there. One stalker. Absolute MVP. It says only one kill. <clears throat> but we know this is more than one kill, right? Like, this is... There was eight marines in there. Or seven marines in there. That was, that was eight kills for a stalker. Why doesn't that add up? Surely taking out a dropship, clutch in a last moment like that, should immediately promote you to... To, to a better rank. Why don't we have a better rank? What's going on here? Now, what we do have is a tank at home. We have two tanks at home. Actually, it took out some of these stalkers, didn't it? I think it took out one stalker at least. Colossus is on the way behind us, and the third base is practically done. Third base right now starting for Gumiho. Gumiho is not going to get any marauders here for such a, a large amount of time. It is insane to me how long he's going to be without marauders. Look at this. Pure Marine for now. Couple of tanks being produced as well. If he wants another tank, 
he's gonna need to cut something else because he just doesn't have the cash available for it third refinery on the way yep there we go third tank and this fourth cc we have barracks four or third cc we have barracks four and five on the way a minor cut here actually in scv production i wonder if that is to get more units out and kumiho's plan is still to follow this up with a big timing attack basically oh no How sick would it be if these stalkers would have found that medevac? And the same stalker, I think it was this one, would have actually gotten the kill on that on that medevac again. That would have been epic. Very epic indeed. Nice pylon spread. Or, well, pylon spread. Nice one pylon on the bottom of the map. It's actually going to provide some value here if the medevac continues on its current path. Observer? No. I thought it was an observer because it was moving so close to the edge. But it's actually just a little bit of a stalker. One uh, leg off the cliff. Very ballsy, Mr. Stalker. Very ballsy. More gates are being built here. Do we even have a forge yet? I don't think there is a forge. So this is just for now going to be a, a straight up chartled Colossus build. Which might actually go into an attack as well. Stalker's moving out. Want to get out uh, their blink and probably bop this medevac. It's definitely a possibility. Observer flies into a turret in the main base. That's what we call suboptimal. Two forges on the way, as well as a Templar archives. Ooh. And charge finishing up. You know what I'm feeling here? I'm feeling that that creator should just go and go get a move out going. You know, just move across the map. See if you can deal some damage. You have complete map control right now. Maybe you can fight some marines with your Colossi. Maybe you can clear a mine here or there. You can put the fear of Colossus into Gumiho as well. Oh, wow. This is, oh my god. This is, this is a dream scenario for creator. If he's still in position, Gumiho is going to stim forward? That's a call that I don't think a lot of Terrans would agree with. Uh, this Medivac may be in a little bit of trouble. Tries to get the pickup, will not get it. But the Medivac does get to live to die another day. Combat shield is finishing up right now. I don't think Gumiho can move out here. I'm not quite sure what he's been smoking. But I want some of that. Because he's, he's, he's not in the same universe anymore. Look at this. If he truly believes he can move out right now, he's, he's, left, uh, he, he's left reality. He's in an alternate reality. Double depot drops. Beautiful stuff. Nice cost. Very, very nice. Here comes the four mine drop. Oh, and there goes the four mine drop. Was it you who got it? No. This is the stalker I'm going to be paying attention to. It's like one of the guys that does everything correct but doesn't get the medal. You know? Someone else gets the medal. The fella that does all the work in the office but never gets the promotion. This is why you should never work too hard. Because if you work too hard, they can't promote you. Because then they need two people to fill your old job. This is why you should only work hard enough for people to notice you, but not hard enough that you become irreplaceable in your current role. That's what this stalker did. It's going to be a stalker forever. Idiot. Should have let that medevac fly. Just put in one more shot, but not deal enough damage. You're never going to make it in the big leagues now. Sad. Never going your own. Going to own your own private island. Or a yacht. That's you, Mr. Stalker. Just one of the pack. But you've done extraordinary things. And you are aware of that. And you can find value in that. Not everything needs a monetary reward. I believe in you, Stalker. If you feel happy in your role right now, then I feel happy for you. And I get joy from your joy. And we share that. This game... is absolutely nothing happening. So I'm making up stories about Stalkers. If something was happening, there was something to discuss. With the case, I think Gumiho's plan here is good, by the way. He was in a very bad position, and he's managed to uh, kind of position himself in such a way that he can go for either an all-out attack or just slowly transition into a kind of real late game here. This is a good fight, potentially, for Gumiho. Four tanks. There's a couple of ghosts as well. Two two upgrades about to finish up. So he actually has an upgrade lead. Salad run by is hitting the third base at the moment. Could be an issue. This is a, what is this run? It's an Archon Immortal Salad run. It's one of these run bys that you dream of. 
It's like that you read about on Reddit. It's like, why don't Protoss players run by with Immortals? They have very high damage. They can snipe sensor towers very quickly. Gets upvoted 300 times. And other Terrans who also think it's a smart idea. No, it sounds great. Snipe, snipe an orbital command and run out with seven Immortals. Man, Protoss players are so dumb. Can't believe they haven't thought of it. Then I flame them. And then this happens. Thanks for nothing, creator. Now I'm the idiot. Disruptors are being built. This game is still very, very favorable for a creator, by the way. Um, Eco is not good enough for Gumiho to, to ever take a second fight. He has one fight in him right now, and that's with this army. This isn't necessarily a very strong army. It is an okay army, but it's not an army that's going to... I don't know. It's not going to, to steamroll, I don't think. I don't think that's really possible. There's a lot of Marines in here. They're getting stormed. All of them on top of each other. EMP is not connecting yet here. Disruptor shot does not connect either, but that doesn't matter. As more SEVs are being taken out. Archon Stalker Zealot here for the win. As uh, this Archon is going to get popped like the balloon by these ghosts. But the damage has already been dealt. 49 workers to 76. I'd actually prefer here right now if Creator would stay on the map. And the reason for that is, is because if he loses a fight... He needs time to reinforce. He wants one or maybe two war pins. If you're at home and you lose your fight, these reinforcements probably need to come from different locations or, you know, you get your robots over here. Maybe you want to warp in on the right side. And also, it just takes time. So if you are if you lose a fight here and then have to, your opponent still needs to move across the map to win the game, you probably can get two more warp pins in for free, which is a pretty big deal. That's a good disruptor shot. Um, it also allows you to use disruptors a little bit more, right? Because you can recharge them, use them aggressively, recharge them while running away from your opponent, kite a little bit. Yet you, yes, you might lose one, but this feels very nice. This just feels very, very good. Zealot Warpin does finish right now, and these mines are not done yet. I think Gumiho is just counting the seconds for the next Zealot Warpin. Spots it, and is going to clear every single Zealot here. And they do not get the damage that they wanted. Four kills. It's not enough. 3-3 three, three, halfway done. I wonder if Gumio is going to wait for that. That might be a mistake. But he he might just want to try. I think that's actually his plan. 3-3 three, three, max out and go for it. He's going to have a huge army. Consisting of 8 ghosts, a crap ton of marauders, but simply not enough vikings. There's 5 colossi out on the other side. And 5 colossi hit pretty hard if there's no vikings to deal with them. Archons of course will pop easily. There's a Templar here as well. There's a Prism with this. Here comes a big hit. No Guardian Shield yet. Disruptor's not going to get the connection. EMPs will hit as uh, ooh, a lot of Archons go down, but so do a lot of Ghost and Marauders there. Decent enough kiting out of Creator. Another Warping comes in. Disruptor once again gets the connection. As uh, GG gets called, Creator wins game number two. And Gumiho for the tap. On Ancient Cistern, hopefully we're going to see a more inspired game so far this series has been slightly disappointing can't help but shake the feeling that this series has been a little bit disappointing Kumiho usually kind of brings the fire but if he's not in a good position in the early game I think the way that he played that last game despite dying was probably correct you know he, he died and lost the game but he was in a really bad spot so it's it's only normal I, I think the plan he was going for made sense some type of 2-2 timing push. I would have liked to see more Vikings in there. But he was so far behind after the early game. I mean, can't blame the feller. I think the real mistake was the initial fight with the double medevac into the 10 stalkers. That just seemed like a bad call. Like, I, there's, there's no real two ways around that. It seemed like that an improper response. Creator uh, used his advantage well and made the correct calls. I hope we're going to see a different build order from Creator, though. I, I really am not a fan of that Stalker into Sentry, into Twilight. I've already discussed why. I think it, it just gets your blink way, way too late. It is a, a, a massive amount of gas that you're investing early on for... Well, I don't want to say for no apparent reason, but for, for very little reason. And, and, and I think that's just simply an issue. Gas is everything in the early game for Protoss. It, it really is. It is so important and delaying your twilight council by an added 50 gas or another what is it 75 gas if you 
if usually you play adept stalker twilight or even adept adept twilight if you now build stalker sentry twilight that's just a huge deal it's just a huge huge deal i'm happy to already see an adept start here for creator in general i much prefer first units being adept one because it deals well with reapers and two because it allows you to get that tech a little bit faster. Second adept on the way as well. It's gonna be a chrono boost. I like this. Uh, this is this is a good start. I I'm, I'm a fan of it at least. Look, look at the timing on the Twilight Council. 227. That's a very reasonable timing here. This adept is going to probably try and move across the map. Actually, that's what what you definitely could do against it, uh, or could do with it against a Reaper. This was a double gas first. Never mind, then you don't want to move it across the map usually. I'm actually surprised we're not seeing a battery anywhere here. Wow. Adept, Adept Stalker. Very late battery. This battery would not be in time at all for a double Reaper plus Hellion. Luckily, that's not what's being played. This is instead going to be a, a pure mind drop. Blink should start right away. There we go. Does start. Are we going to get a fourth unit out? We don't have a second gateway, so it almost feels like a fourth unit is going to be absolutely vital here. No, second gateway, but late. And no fourth unit. All right, absolutely. This, this beats me. Adept gets blasted as well. Two more gateways. No robo yet, though. Now we get a robo. Before, or sorry, after the third gateway. So if this is going to be a 3 to 4 gate pressure, 3 to 4 gate all in, it doesn't feel so powerful. If this is going to be anything else, I also don't think it's going to be so powerful. I mean, this is what? Blink? 3 gateways is going to be a bunch of stalkers. Stalkers will not be ready with Blink. Hell, not enough stalkers will be ready in general, even if you did have Blink right now. Medivac is just going to be capable of boosting in here, dropping the mines, and I think there's enough time to go again. Completely out of position creator currently, Gumiho is moving in with the Reaper, with the Mines, is going to force two Widow Mines, uh, sorry, two Mineral Lines to completely move out. Good Umber on that first Mine as well, is going to deny even more Mining time. This is a huge, huge deal here. Gets another Umber on that one Mine. This has been fantastic, absolutely fabulous. Now gets the piss off with this Mine as well. This was, this was top tier play, absolutely top tier play here out of Gumiho. Am I a fan of the follow-up with no second barracks done yet? No second barracks started yet? No, I'm not a huge fan. But I believe against what he's currently playing, it is okay as long as he gets a bunker. Did go for the, the double raven? No. Ah. He really needs a bunker, okay? Without a bunker, this is going to be difficult. With a bunker, this is going to be fairly playable. Massive supply block here for creator, which means that the work account is going to be a little bit closer than it usually would be so many units on the way is this going to be a third cc no just really late barracks surprising strategy choice here very surprising strategy choice this mine is going to go back in is there anything in position to deal with it the answer is very simple no two ladders mine comes in we'll get two kills three kills four kills three kills very nice the same time raven pops in Throws down his first auto turret. Second auto turret available pretty soon as well. One, two, three workers will fall. Maybe four? No. Six workers going down in total. Gumiho not completely in position to deal with his blink all in quite yet. Uh, does have three tanks. So has the units, but not the position. It's better than having the position, but not the units. Because that usually means you die. First Raven is out, of course, still. Out, on, out and about on the map. Templar Archive, so this is going to be a, a two-base storm follow-up or an Archon drop. I think it's supposed to be a storm follow-up, but this will this will not work. This is simply just not going to work. I don't see it working. I can't imagine it working. I think this is this is garbage. I'm also not a fan of this move out though. This this looked like a like what? Like a three or four gate stalker all in, but actually ends up being a four stalker pressure with a prism. Straight into an Archon. There's no stim, there's no combat shield. I hope this, I hope for the love of God, that this is a freaking fake move out. There's no more Templar around. This Raven's gonna move in towards the natural. Throw down one turret and could perhaps throw down a second turret as well. Come on, let's go. Throw it in there, buddy. Throw it in. Up, ah, there we go. Beautiful stuff right now.
three pros do get taken out as we have these uh, marines starting to fight the prism. And this is a fantastic game so far for Gumiho. Wait, is this five Rex? He's actually gonna two base all in. Double Raven, two base all in. This is one of the builds that, that I dream of. I've heard of it before, but I've never seen it in person. Wait, where are these Ravens going? The heaven. Well, actually, that guy went to hell. He killed like 10 workers. That's not allowed, my friend. You can't just attack workers. It's messed up. They're doing their job. Stalkers here. I'm still trying to delay this move out. Actually take out a tank there. Impressive. Very impressive. This has been good control out of Creator. Does he have Storm yet or... No, it doesn't have Storm. It doesn't even have Charge. Oh, he's in an awful spot. He's gonna try and move in here and go for a full-on base trade. And might actually be capable of getting it as well as... There's not enough reinforcements to deal with these Stalkers. That means that all of a sudden this is a... An all-in slash base trade slash... What in the world actually is this? More Stalkers being morphed in. Oh, Prism in a little bit of trouble perhaps. No, it's going to survive for now. This, this move out of Creator should have never worked. Gumiho should have been prepared for it, but he wasn't. And now all of a sudden, this game is very close. There is potential here that, that Creator actually wins this game and does the series. Eight SCVs have gone down on the side of our Terran player. Stalkers will get cleaned up. There's still five, no, sorry, only three barracks. These two never actually finished. There's a lot of cash in the bank, though, for Gumiho. And Gumiho has killed the third base, so... Is it possible here for Gumiho to throw down his own third CC and say, hey, I'm up and up great. I have a lot of cash in the bank. I don't think I want to fight you anymore. I think our fighting days are over, my friend. I'm I'm just going to sit back and 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 build SEVs once again. Um, here goes an Immortal. No, gets picked up and saved. Pylon does get blasted there. Here come a bunch of Marines with plus one, of course. Take out one Immortal. Take out a bunch of Stalkers. This is not a great fight. Look at the cash in the bank here for... For Gumio, 1300. He could triple expand right now and still be floating 200. That is not good. That is not very good at all. Still winning this game, though. Still winning this game. Super Battery is back online. Is there energy for it? Yes, there is. So could be used. Immortal's going to snipe this, this tank. Good play. Oh, actually. No, good play still. For a second, I was afraid there that the prison was going to die. Second eBay Armory, third CC, uh, lots of units in production, still floating 400. Gumiho struggling to spend his money in this game. He's adding two Liberators at a time as well. Uh, I think that Creator might actually just die against the next push here. One Stalker dies for free. There's three Immortals in this comp, but there's so many Marines, and Marines are quite good against Immortals. If this was 10 Marauders and half a Marine, I think I would be more okay with it than it being this amount of Marines, honestly. Seems bad here for our Protoss player as Gumiho stims in forward. He's going to try and fight. Concussive Shells finishing up. Concussive Shells is great if you have Marauders, which doesn't seem to quite be the case yet. Prism gets blasted. This is an okay engagement, though. As the Stalkers move in, blink into the opponent. The Immortals uh, kind of forming the, the spine of this army, the, the, the backbone. Liberators try to siege up, and now we'll try to get away. Blink forward. Poof. Two stalkers go down because of that blink. It's usually not how you want to utilize blink. Plus two is on the way. The third base has finished up. Creator in a in shambles right now. He's down in upgrades. He's down in eco. I think he's down in army composition as well. He's definitely down in army supply. He's down in absolutely everything. And usually you can overcome if one or two out of the three things you know go poorly. If you're down in upgrades and eco, but you have bigger army supply, maybe you can overcome it. But if all three things are worse for you, then life can just be very, very difficult and maybe even close to impossible here. Third base gets another cancel. Once 2-2 finishes up, these units are going to be practically invincible. Without any disruptors, I don't see a way for Creator to really win in that case. As uh, this drop oh, is heading in towards the main base, Liberator's trying to siege up into an interesting location here. Tanks on the low ground as well. Do we get a full-on lift into the main here? No. Just a single medevac is going to help out for now. Uh, base trade once again. Base trade engaged. Liberators move forward. They're going to clear the ramp, I guess. Feels like Gumio's just gonna stim in and try to win the game here. Yeah. Good call. That's a lot of units at home, too. It's 
I, I don't even think he's gonna die at home. I actually think he's gonna win at home as well. 1-1 one, one upgrade against 0-0. Zero, zero. W again. And so Gumiho wins the series 2-1. Two, two, uh, better last game. Interesting first game. Second game a bit of a bore, but it does happen in best of three series, of course. I hope you all enjoyed it anyway. Thanks so much for watching. If you did like it, don't forget to hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel and let me know what you thought of it in the comments down below. Bye-bye.